Okay, so welcome back, everybody. We're here hamming on hamming, learning to learn, and our next presenter is Mike Orfini, who's going to talk to us about hamming and creativity. Mike, please. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Mike, Lieutenant Commander Mike Orfini, uh, Navy SEAL, been in for about 15 years now, all East Coast, Virginia Beach, SEAL commands. I'm moving to Tampa, Florida here in a few weeks. Uh, I'm going to be doing something completely I have never done before, SOCOM, working in Special Operations Command down in Tampa as in the acquisitions field, which I am really looking forward to. It's totally something different. I, I don't want to say I was an expert for the last 15 years in being a SEAL, but I, I conducted a good amount of operations and I felt really comfortable uh, doing the tactical level things that a SEAL does. Moving on to acquisitions will be different. And I'm looking forward to it. And actually the brief today, the creativity brief and the lectures that Hamming has on Sakai, I think um, it kind of had me look into myself and see, okay, how am I going to take on this next chapter of my life, whether it be five years, whatever, probably be five years. I'm probably 20 and done. So moving forward. So three things that creativity really captured here in this brief that, that I got out of it was one, Knowing yourself, Hamming is big, big it's, and we'll talk about this later, knowing yourself. Two is, in order to be creative, you really got to understand the basics of whatever you're looking into. And three, you make your own luck. This brief made me, before we start, this brief made me think back to high school. I, I went to All Boys High School in Washington, D.C., and I took art my freshman year. I'm, I'm not the best student. I'm not a bad student, but I was like, okay, art, I can get through it. thought I was just going to be being creative, you know, drawing some pictures. Well, there's a lot more to art, as we all know. There's, you know, you have to look at the form, perspective, going from 2D to 3D perspective, with the IC small back to large, and the composition, rule of threes, actually, size, angle, perspective, all that. Well, if you don't have all those three things, you know, your art, it's not going to necessarily necessarily be creative. So getting the fundamentals promotes creativity, if that makes sense. So Hamming starts out and he mentions large, large corporations and primitive tribes, stating that they don't necessarily appreciate originality, creativity, not, and novelty, novelties. What a tribe does is usually, you know, dictated by its elder. And large corporations do, you know, the management knows what to do and they're not really too keen to uh, listening to, to newcomers or, or younger personnel uh, tell them, you know, what needs to be done. Kind of like can't teach an old dog new tricks. This lecture, Hamming's lecture here is, is really, as he says, it, is, is increasing the chance to become a creative person. I think that's an interesting quote. He states the chance to become interest, to become creative. So it's not just something that happens. It's, it's something like I've mentioned before about having the basics and then elevating that chance to become creative. So when we talk about creativity, originality, and, and novelty, Hamming goes on to mentions, you know, if you multiply two 10-digit numbers together and you, you, you'll get a product number. That, that, that's a, it's original, but it's not creative. But if you take, you know, the biggest prime number out there and you, you, you calculate it, that's original. It's not, I'm sorry, it's not original, but it's difficult, and, and therefore it's creative. So in, 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 in kind of saying what he, what he feels is create creativity is it has to be more than just something that's simple. It has to be something that's, that's difficult, and that's creativity. So when we talk about modern art as an analogy, one of the big things about his lecture here is, you know, being able to make analogies uh, or similarities between things that are completely different. So we look, we can, we can look at the starving artist, you know, and he, and his pictures that he, he drew in his lifetime, if you will, or painted, and he, you know, he died poor in poverty. And then, you know, 50 years later, his, his work is worth millions of dollars. So it's changes. 
art changes, as as well as as creativity changes, as 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 uh, the world changes. I, we kind of spoke about that earlier. Something that you know almost evolves. And one of the things that you know, artists will refer to is the, the Robert Fulton complex. So Fulton, he developed or he, he manufactured boats. So Fulton said that, you know, or the artists will say they laughed at Fulton and they were wrong and they're laughing at me. So they also must be wrong. Well, I'm a great artist. As we go to the explanation of the continent, the, the, uh, uh, the continental drift. So two, two theorists, uh, you had uh, Dick and Wegner in the early 1900s that really came up with this theory of the continental drift. And it wasn't really recognized until um, more literature, if you will, came about uh, after World War II. Just because that the literature came about after World War II doesn't mean that Dick and Wegner weren't creative in their thoughts and in their, their, their theories, similar to, to art and the, the uh, starving artist. So you know, what, is, what is being creative? So if being creative is taking, per se, three different fields and putting them to get together to make some sort of great contribution. One of the examples that Hamming provides during his lecture is he, when he worked at Bell Labs, one of the experts came to him with a problem. And he said, okay, yeah, I, I'm gonna work out, I could work this problem out. And as he thought, went through the process of figuring and helping this expert out, this colleague that came to him, you know, he just applied what he said it was simple least squares to the problem. And he's like, you know, from his perspective, this was somewhat simple, but yeah, he, he applied a methodology to, to solving his colleague's problem. So when push come to shove and he had to sign his name to, to be put for the solution to be published, he went to the boss and he said, you know, I, I don't really necessarily think I should, should sign my name to this. I didn't do anything creative. All I did was just apply a methodology to, you know, to get a solution. And this was really interesting to me. His boss said, no, you need to sign it. And the reason you sign it is worth publishing. You came to a, 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 a solution and you provided a contribution. You know, Hammy was kind of like, well, I, you know, he still had reservations about it, he says. Well, you know, I didn't really do anything creative. Well, what's creative in one person's mind or lane might not be creative in somebody else. I think that's really interesting. So I look back at my career, too, and a little side note here is like, uh, and one of my deployments in Afghanistan, I, I you know, I, I used to say that the people in Afghanistan, you know, where I was in the mountains, they lived like they were, you know, I say in Pompeii, like the days of Pompeii. Why do they, you know, still farm like they do? And, you know, they, we can bring agriculturalists in and we did and to, to help them out to, hey, we can, you guys can produce so much more almonds and, you know, whatever, what other, other kind of good, good you have, you know, to, uh, to be more effective, if you will. And it just wasn't their culture, which is completely fine, but, and if I would have brought that into them, you know, it would have been a different kind of creativity, but creativity has to be, you know, the right place, right time. And that's a different slide that we're going to talk to. Anyway, side story on, on creativity. And going back to that analogy of the, the tribal elders, which I thought made me click in my mind while I was uh, going over this brief. One of the more interesting slides here it's this quote below you can see that which you learn from others you learn to follow that which you teach yourself you learn to lead this is simply stating to put it in layman terms if you will you can learn something and you can put it and keep it in that box but they say if you can explain what you've learned i.e to your colleagues you're able to one retain it, you understand it, and then you can really learn to lead and move outside of that box. And they say that at NPS too. You know, when you're studying together as a, as a, you know, with your colleagues, and if you can explain it to them, then you really understand it. And if you can really understand it, you can actually take it to the next level.
One of the quotes, I'll back up here, sorry. One of the quotes that I thought also was interesting was, Hamming said, bringing things psychologically far apart and bringing them together and saying, look, they are related. And this offers a, a, some sort of great contribution is an idea is really telling what creativity is. Sorry for that. I had to back up there because that's something I really wanted to highlight there. Okay. Hamming gives an analogy too, as we, as I move forward is, you know, a, a baseball player at, at bat is swinging and swinging the bat uh, as the ball is coming across the plate. He's not thinking about what he's doing. He's swinging the bat to hit the ball. Later, he'll go back and look at film potentially, or look at, look within his swing or his mechanics and figure out, Hey, what did I do? What did I do? Right. What did I do wrong? What do I need to correct to correct? When you do something creative, you might put together a whole bunch of formulas to get to a solution. But after you're done doing, getting the solution, you need to go back and look at the process of which got you to the solution. And if there's things that you need to cut out, it's very important to cut them out. Cutting out the waste as you know, kind of he alludes to is, is making your, your approach succinct, which, is able, which will be able to lead others further. Oh, this was interesting brainstorming, you know, talking about ideas and, and how to really, you know, enhance your creativity. He says brainstorming doesn't work. And, and he, he, when he says that, he said scheduled brainstorming doesn't work. And I can, I, I truly agree, agree with this statement. It's like the, the same kind of concept of uh, mandatory fun. You know, mandatory fun isn't fun. But if it's just you're, you're getting together and you're doing because it it's not mandatory, then it's fun. Well, scheduled brainstorming, you know, it's because it's scheduled, it doesn't work. But if you're, you know, uh, you know, at the back of the uh, back of the napkin at the bar or you're talking to friends and, and they're able to relate to you in a kind of an informal manner, like just like uh, so and so or just like this and being able to rate, relate things, analogies, similarities, it really kind of helps trigger the mind and stimulate the mind. And these are the type of people that Hamming really he actually goes and t tells in his lecture of who, you should, who he's friends with or who you should be friends with and who you don't want to be friends with. You don't want to be friends with the guy that says, oh, that's really interesting. Yeah. You want to be friends with the guy that perhaps, you know, says, you know, well, think about it like this or yeah, this makes, this relates to this, this, this instance. So I thought that was uh, surround yourself by, uh, by uh, smart uh, people. One of the things that I don't necessarily know if I agree with or not is, and maybe I took it out of context and maybe one of the experts here can, can, can tell me, but he went on to tell a story about one of his friends that, or colleagues that was ex extremely intelligent. And uh, so much so that he didn't, he, he, was, he was so intelligent, but he didn't know if the person was obsessed, if you will, or, had the emotional content to concentrate on a precise issue. And in the story, he, he, in the analogy that he gave or story, if you will, he said that the individual would think through problem, would think through a problem, be very, be very, uh, trying to think of, be very, uh, on point at work with, with everything that he said, but he didn't dive into it as much as he should have. And, and the reason why he said he would at home, at home, he would go home and play his guitar. So I, Hamming, from what I can gather from this particular lecture was really invested, almost obsessed, as my wife would say about me, uh, in, 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 in his profession. And he would sleep it, he would dream it. And he, th he stated that this is what would create his creativity. Uh, now, going back to the person that his colleague that went home and played the guitar, the reason I disagree with this, and, and maybe not disagree is so not, not the right word, but I'm doing my thesis on cognitive performance, and it's going from a parasynthetic state to a synthetic state, vice versa. The fight or flight mode that you have in your brain, and then moving to a synthetic state, vice versa. But moving from the fight or flight 
in your brain to like, hey, relaxing your brain, taking, uh, taking uh, the time, taking everything down, the stress levels down, and then, you know, enhancing it when you need to. And there's different ways that you can do that, obviously, cognitive methods. Well, the, his colleague that went home and played the guitar and, and me, for instance, like if I do that or I do art, like I like to do art sometimes, actually while I'm doing art or playing the guitar per se, you inadvertently will think back to something that you, you know, did during the day or you're working on during the day and it might trigger something. So when he said that, I don't know if I was really too, I don't know if I, it was a good point, but there's two different personalities. I think you really need to take that in when you're considering creativity in people. Some things work for others, well, well think, and vice versa. One way he said to solve uh, problems or uh, you know, help with creativity is, okay, you're thinking about the problem, you think about the problem, you think about the problem. Well, think about what that solution to that problem looks like and then kind of backtrack into working out how to get the answer. And then we've talked about it already, but coming up with loose analogies for, you know, different ideas or different concepts uh, helps promote creativity. Uh, dropping, dropping problems here. So Albert Einstein in his search for a unified theory is, according to Hamming, a classic example of of where you know he he failed is what he says the oppenheimer should have said to him you know you need to drop this theory in your pursuit of this theory for six months and work on something else so we need to know when we're thinking about problems and working through problems we need to know you know is it the wrong problem we're thinking about it thinking about or is it at the wrong time or in the wrong way One of the one of the ways that Hamming kind of really stated that he helped him find solutions, whether it be through creativity or, or what, was providing a deadline for himself. So if someone came to him with a problem, he would say, "Oh, I'll get back to you." He wouldn't he wouldn't say, "I'll get back to you." He said, "I'll get back to you Monday morning." But this really say this cornered Hamming into making a decision. You know, Sunday night and having it in his head on how he was going to be creative and make the decision. So it forced him, essentially it forced him to, to not procrastinate and gave him a deadline. And then in that deadline, he knew he had Sunday night was when he needed to have an answer to that. So it's just finding a ways to manage oneself. And, and, and on that, he really goes on to saying that it's really important for you to understand yourself. So write down three things of what you're good at, and what you're not so good at, and then understand how to potentially do better. He went from, I believe, the East Coast. He took a train down to Kansas for, for one of his assignments. And in doing so, he said, this is a way for me to restart. You know, he, he had a potential of acting one way. So he said, you know, this is what I'm going to work on with this new job. And he, 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 he made that similar to us in the military. It's like every two years we have a, a, the ability to kind of start over. And um, it's something actually I'm going to carry on here is like, I'll go to Tampa and first of all, I'm be working in the business world. So it's like, I, I have not worked in the business world. I've been brutally honest with, you know, I've had to be with what I've done as a job and probably sometimes maybe a little bit too blunt with uh, how I approach things or maybe I come across. So being in the business world and having tact and uh, being able to work with industry and people that maybe put, perhaps aren't in the military, I've got to maybe, you know, look at that and say, how am I going to change this to, to better, better the outcomes. Youth favors creativity. I think this was interesting. So Hamming, he got a list of all the great contributions that took place at Bell Labs. He put it on his door. It was a long list, I think of 50, 50 or so contributions. And he looked at them and he looked at them and he said, you know what? Most, if not all of these contributions that I made to Bell Labs were in the fit first 15 years of my career. 
what he's saying with that is youth favors creativity because once you move up, move forward, you become more of a, a coach and your creativity perhaps won't be the same as it is when you're, when you're younger. Studying yourself and your best traits is important. You get the reputation for doing X, Y, and Z. So use that, whatever that is, to your advantage. He stated that he was egotistical at times, and, but he used it to his advantage. So that's something that I think you know, we can all take away from, from his lecture here. Overall, I think the the, create, the creativity um, lecture that that Hamming guy was 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 exactly kind of what we already talked about. Is kind of putting everything in its sim creativity in its simplest form, and making you step back and think, yeah, this is creativity because creativity can be like we already talked about art and all different can be so wide. He made it into a very simple form and through his lecture, and in doing so, he he kind of put a definition on a very broad category. Uh, pending any questions, that concludes my brief. I just took a screen capture. I hope that's okay with everybody. See if we can get my screen back though. Questions anyway. Mike, that was very interesting. Um, uh, a few reactions uh, I had were quite interesting. When I was an MS student, a uh, math student at NPS, you know, well, submarine people, but but computer science folks especially, they're not known for their bubbly personalities, okay, that tend to often uh, introverted. In fact, did I, might have, did I tell this joke already? It's, it's only funny to everybody else. You know how to tell an extroverted computer science. The extroverted computer scientist looks at your shoes instead of their own shoes. It's That's hard funny. to do on video, but you you get the point. You know. So anyway, study with others. Get out of here. Why why would I ever study with others? You know, there's too much work to do. Study, study, study. And it was just some kind of very superficial dogma. They said you must all get in study groups and go study. I was like, you know, what? We all know how to study. What? But it was interesting. It probably took me a quarter or two to get into it, but. When I started going and studying some of the material, I had a real shocker with, with the other group because they would start talking about stuff. I had no idea what it was. And they said, oh, yeah, yeah, that was, that was right in class the other day. I, I thought he was talking about this. And, oh, no, no. It was like, oh, wow. So, you, so one of the things I got, my takeaway was when you study in a group, you learn what you don't know things that you had no idea existed you still will have no idea existed unless you start listening to other people so that, that was my reaction to what you were saying about team efforts So I guess that, that joke was really pretty stultifying. <laughs> Any other reactions? Sir? I thought the irony of a couple presentations ago, Hamming talking about experts and how you should always think about what the experts are saying was interesting because now here he was espousing things as the expert 
and creativity, yet most of the things that I heard him talking about were things that worked good for him and or maybe the particular time that he was in. And he talked about things where, well, you know, you've only got a few years, it's, it's the young folk. And I think there is a, a slightly better way of thinking of that. It's not necessarily that your contributions all have to be when you're young. It's your contributions happen when you enter a new field. And so you've got so many years in that field until you're now thinking like everybody else. And then you're not going to bust out. But if you just stopped with the literal words that Hamming was saying, just, oh, you 15 years, timer's over. Well, okay, I'm 50. Why am I even bothering? But if you go and you layer it with some of the other things you said, it would have been very interesting to have had a beer with him and called him on that and seen what he would, what his reaction would be. But I think he might actually chuckle a bit. Marty would probably have a better idea of that. A variation on what you said. You're, you're focusing on, by the way, good, uh, good presentation, Mike. Hamming's class focused on the first 15 years at Bell Labs where he felt he was his most creative. But if you look at all that he's published, and when you see, if you go to the IEEE or the ACM or the American Math Society, their online digital libraries and put in Hamming, you'll find that he wrote well over a hundred articles on topics you would be very surprised on. Hamming stated that you shouldn't stay in any one field more than seven years. Now, I totally agree. You were alluding to Hamming 46 to 66 at Bell Lab and, every, and many he said, taken by events are not applicable today. But I believe that reinventing yourself after you've written two or three papers, write those papers, give those speeches, then move on. Or you'll be the tired old guy who only ever did error correcting code. Having was so much more than what his award said. Well, super job today, Mike. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it. Here's a takeaway thought for everybody next week, since most of you have gone through it. Could the giving of this kind of a lecture, this kind of a presentation like, like most of you have done, some of you are about to do, so you go through Hamming and talk about what it means to yourself and, and maybe Lauren's point on how is the field changing or what is it going? Could that be the basis of making self-driven distance learning worthwhile? The act of forcing people having the discipline to say, I'm going to give that talk. I'm going to tell everybody, what do I think he said? What do I think it means? Those are big reveals for anybody and a, and a high bar to talk about. Uh, you've each been very impressive and interesting in how you've talked about it. And, and Mike, you, you brought to the foreground some of these very issues in the creativity. What does it mean to be creative? And what are the forcing functions? And can you maybe not schedule mandatory fun, maybe brainstorming, but on the other hand, can you pursue it at all? This, you know, this, this course itself might be considered a, a form of self driven weekly brainstorming, even if it's sort of open-ended, sort of walking all around the horizon. So anyway, let me leave you with those thoughts for next week when we do the, the final wrap-up of, did the course work for you all? What could we do better? Can we get, is there a next level that we should strive for? All right, thanks everybody. See you next time.